This distribution is used by Linus Torvalds. Of course, I'm speaking about Fedora. Version 20 recently released, and we're going to have a look at it right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. It's been a long time since I've looked at Fedora, so let's find out what's new. It appears that we have, uh, they've, they've changed the application installer. And the installer was pretty straightforward and easy to use. They've upgraded to Blues 5 for uh, Bluetooth uh, management of your uh, wireless devices. Fedora 20 Boost 1.54 Uplift. What that is, I'm not sure. Uh, they changed uh, Network Manager Bonding Support, Network Manager Bridging Support, they removed MTA, they removed Syslog, they upgraded Perl, they upgraded Ruby, and they upgraded uh, Python Setup Tools. Okay, and something of interest, this distro only uses 503 megs of RAM. So, great for those of you uh, who have at least a gig of RAM installed. But I still recommend this on modern hardware because GNOME Shell does require some graphics acceleration. When you mouse over the upper right corner of the screen, you're going to see that all of the icons in the notification area light up. You just click on that, okay, and then you can adjust your volume, you can adjust your battery power management settings here, your system settings here, there's also the ability to lock the screen and, of course, uh, to power off or restart the machine. All of your settings are here. We're managing your background, all of your notification settings, online accounts, your privacy settings, region and language settings, search settings, your Bluetooth settings. It's all here, easy to use, ready to go. If you click the clock at the top of the screen, this is where you can manage your uh, calendar and your events. Open a calendar, open your clock's date and time settings. You can click activities or by pressing the super key, it will display any open windows you have here so you can easily select between them. Also over here you can add additional desktops as needed by dragging some of those windows into new uh, desktops. So that's pretty neat in its design. Quick access to Firefox, your email, your instant messaging, your uh, music player, your photo manager, uh, the LibreOffice suite, uh, your files, and of course, you can also add things. In this case, I added a terminal for easy access. Down here, you're going to see there are two new messages. Now, something to note, I completely updated this 100% and I've seen these messages come up quite regularly and the two of them are uh, one of them a problem detected with GNOME Shell which you can report so that they can get those fixes out and then there's one for Firefox as well there's also a little settings gear that we can click here and you can either turn those on or off so that they're not bothering you and that sort of thing and then of course down here uh, this is where you can manage any removable media or devices that may be plugged in. When we click on the Show Applications icon, by default it goes on to frequent or applications that you may have opened recently. And then all of them are listed here. And just a standard complement of uh, applications come with this that would be standard with GNOME Shell. The Cheese Webcam Booth, your clocks, contacts, Documents and interestingly enough this program will allow you to manage all of your documents in the cloud once you have that set up Your instant messaging your email You can manage your files with Nautilus Firefox comes preloaded with this get it. This is a simple text editor the LibreOffice suite Rhythmbox for managing all of your music your settings that I just showed you earlier shot well The software center we're going to have a look at that in a moment and then under Sundry here, this is where you can go to your automatic bug room. 
important. You manage your firewall settings here, your network connections, the release notes are here, screen reader for accessibility, and of course some troubleshooting as well. And then the standard complement of utilities comes included with this. So you have the file roller for managing any archives, a calculator, a character map. You're managing your disks, your disk usage analyzer, the events document viewer, uh, font viewer, your help, passwords and keys, remote desktop, screenshot, a system monitor, and the terminal. Okay, so let's have a look at the package manager here. We open up the software center. You're going to see that the GNOME Software Center looks pretty sleek, kind of similar to uh, the Ubuntu Software Center. And it'll be easy for you to find packages. You can go into Installed here, right, and it'll tell you what you have installed right here. And if there's any packages that came pre-installed with this that you don't want to use, you can easily remove them, unless, of course, they're required uh, by the GNOME desktop here. And then, of course, you go here for your updates. I updated this already before uh, starting the review. And under main here, you may need some things uh, to get your work done. For instance, uh, if you need a disk burner, you're going to have to go into video. It's under disk burning here. You have your choice of Brazero for making coffee cussers. I mean burning your disks. You could install Gnome Baker. Now, that looks interesting. I haven't tried that out. I'll have to play with that sometime. Then ISO Master is available. Under editing, though, really doesn't give you that many selections to choose from. So that means you're going to have to add additional repositories to be able to get more software selections available to you. But the thing is, you could also uh, download RPM packages and just install them that way. So that may be an option for a lot of people, and RPMs are quite popular online when searching for software. I just wish they had more applications available. In the, uh, in the selections here because, you know, there are a lot of really cool video editors and that sort of thing. It would be cool to see, you know, a Vidimux in here, and I didn't see that either under uh, the uh, editing. You know, a Vidimux is very popular, and it's another good open source program, and it's just not here. So, yeah, i really love to see more things. Uh, let's see what they have for games here. They have a nice selection of those. Aha! They've got the mother load of games available. So huge ripo uh, for those of you who like playing games. Uh, and let's see if Steam is in the repository. No application found. Ooh. Well, so if you want to get Steam, well, you might have to add a repository for that. So at the end of the day, Fedora 20 appears to be a nice, stable operating system for intermediate users. Personally, I would not recommend this for beginners. I also wish there was a little bit more packages available in the software center for downloading and trying out. What can I say? I'm a sucker for free software and I love trying out new packages. And so the end user would have to add additional repositories to get the packages they want or even go out and download. Uh, RPM packages and try installing them that way. Small enough for the end user that they can build on top of and make it their own. Well, that's all I have on this. As a reminder, please consider supporting the show hosts you enjoy the most by disabling your ad blockers or shouting them some coins. Peace out.